Our top story this morning, Shivan, first it was pagers and now it's walkie-talkies. The second wave of device explosions killed 20 people, wounded more than 450 others on Wednesday in Hezbollah strongholds in Lebanon. Hezbollah was still coming to terms with what happened on Tuesday and then there were more blasts the following day. Of course, it stoked fears of an all-out war with Israel. Lebanon's health ministry in a statement said that the explosions targeted walkie-talkies used by the Hezbollah members. Handheld radios blew up in the sub southern suburbs of capital Beirut, the Beka Valley and southern Lebanon. New wave of explosions came a day after the simultaneous explosion of hundreds of pagers used by Hezbollah, which killed 12 people and wounded over 2,800 others across Lebanon. Some of the blasts took place during funerals for some of the people who were killed on Tuesday. An explosive device found in the parking lot of one of Lebanon's biggest hospitals was detonated by Lebanese army personnel. After the blasts now, Lebanese personnel are scared of using battery devices altogether. I did not expect what happened today. Things are repeating all over again. We had some devices here that we believed were 100% safe, but out of caution, we removed them from the store because we got worried. Palestinian militant group Hamas has blamed Israel for a new wave of device explosions across Lebanon. And there was no comment from Israel. There hasn't been one yet. However, hours before the explosion, Israel's defense minister, Yoav Gallant, had announced that a new phase in the war is about to start. And an Israeli army division was deployed, was redeployed to the north to include its fight against the Palestinian group's ally, Hezbollah. I believe that we are at the start of a new phase in the war. We must remain consistent over time. This war requires great courage, determination and perseverance. Amid mounting tensions with the Hezbollah, Israeli Army Chief General Herze Halevi visited Israel's northern command on Wednesday. Halevi told the commanders that Israel still has many capabilities that it has not yet activated. Hours after Wednesday's explosions, Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu vowed to return the tens of thousands of displaced people from the north of the country securely back to their homes. I have already said we will safely return the residents of the north to their homes and that is exactly what we will do. Meanwhile, the White House has warned all sides against an escalation of any kind, making it clear that it is not involved in Lebanon device explosions. What I can tell you is we were not involved uh, in yesterday's incidents or today's in, in any way, and I don't have anything more to share. For more on this, we're now being joined by Adrian Calamil, fellow at Arabian Peninsula Institute, terrorism and Middle Eastern scholar. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure to have you on World DNA. Now, sir, I want to begin by asking you, of course, we first saw the wave of pager explosions. Now we are seeing walkie-talkies. These are essentially devices that are in the pockets of Hezbollah personnel. Lebanon is still grasping, was still grasping with the pager blast. Now this has happened. How do you assess this? How does an attack of this nature even get carried out? That, him, that's a very good question. Thank you for having me back. Uh, the way it got carried out was um, I, 
what I believe is that when Fuad Shakur was taken out uh, in uh, in Dahia neighborhood in uh, Beirut, there was a decision made to switch up communications because they tracked him on his cell phone. Now they switched over to pagers. You also have walkie talkies that are exploding now. So what happened is some point somewhere, Israel was able to get into the supply chain and uh, create shaped charges in this closed network of Hezbollah pagers that were sent out to thousands of cadres uh, within Beirut. So what we saw yesterday was, um, you know, thousands of them going off, uh, injuring um, thousands. And also, uh, it was, an, if you look at the after action report, uh, this is going to be an, an amazing intelligence gathering opportunity for the Israelis because Hezbollah has openly admitted that these were only distributed to Hezbollah members. So uh, eyes are on the hospitals, uh, eyes are on who's coming in, and they can map out uh, who's Hezbollah, who isn't, where they sit, uh, what their condition is, etc. Uh, Mr. Kalman, what kind of strategic, well, what kind of psychological impact will it have on Hezbollah at this point when any device with a battery can be weaponized and strategically detonated? Oh, that's a great question, and it, it, I would imagine it's absolutely brutal because the pagers were one thing, but when the walkie-talkies started going off today, and that's what their command and control uses when they're on the battlefield in sensitive areas that you mentioned, such as the Baka in southern Lebanon, uh, when solar panels that are Hezbollah solar panels, uh, thumbprints that are Hezbollah thumbprints, when those things start exploding, they got to start wondering, is anything safe? Who can we trust? Where's the mole? Where do we look? There are all sorts of problems. And it also uh, leaves them blind uh, for any, if Israel is planning on any type of measure to push Hezbollah north of the Latani River, uh, Hezbollah cannot trust their own communication systems at this point. Uh, right. Uh, now, Mr. Kalamil, there's still no comment from Israel. Hours before the explosion, Israel's Defense Minister, Yair Gallant, announced that a new phase of the war is now opening. Is that the is this the new phase that we're talking about now? And how does this position Israel? Uh, hey, uh, that, that, that is a great question. And yes, I do believe. I, I yesterday when I saw this with the three thousand pagers going off, I immediately thought, well, you know, there's some prepping and there was some action uh, with uh, on on the on the border. But then when today, when when the walkie-talkies were going off and uh, other devices, uh, it, it made me think that, yes, they are prepping the next phase, that they are trying to diminish Hezbollah's capacity to put up a fight or tell them to back down and push back and, and cease and desist the rocketing of the civilians in the north, which is the objective, as you laid out, of Netanyahu. Mr. Kalman, uh, John Kirby said that we don't believe that the way to solve this crisis is by additional military operations at all. Now, at this point, a U.S. which has been trying desperately for a ceasefire, there's no denying that. There have been multiple rounds and multiple West Asia tours by uh, the Secretary of State. Of course, uh, at this point, given what has happened in Lebanon, of course, Israel is silent. But does it reflect how little influence U.S. has on Israel at this point? And where do you feel the ceasefire talks head anywhere further from you? Yes. Uh, when Israel is faced with an existential threat, they're going to have to act in accordance with what, what they believe is necessary. Uh, and I don't think the United States um, has uh, – there is some leverage, but there is the strategic relationship that Israel has with the United States, and it's undeniable. And uh, putting pressure, uh, diplomatic solution, and – the I would also say the United States doesn't have any we, we've had a Lebanon policy for years that's been absolutely broken where we just throw more money at it and the situation just just deteriorates. So uh, I, I, I don't I don't see um, I hope there's a diplomatic approach. I hope this will stop and make everybody rethink things. But um, I'm rather cynical on this. All right, Mr. Kalman, thank you for giving your honest opinion on all those questions and sharing all your insights. Always a pleasure having you on World DNA. That was Mr. Adrian Kalman, fellow at Arabian Peninsula Institute, Terrorism and Middle Eastern Scholar.